New England is home to nearly 600 vineyards. Making wine in a cold climate is not easy, says Sarah Marshall, a Massachusetts-based sommelier. Certain climates that are definitely more suited for growing grapes. California, for example, produces more than 80% of wine in the U.S. However, Marshall says, local winemakers bring something else to the table. Definitely a lot of wine tourism. There's some great locations that are beautiful vineyards. Being open to thinking creatively is what's going to help the New England area thrive. Turns out that creativity is thriving in Connecticut. What I personally really enjoy about our Connecticut wineries and our Connecticut wines is that none of them are alike. In fact, Connecticut has an extensive and official wine trail so visitors can explore and support local vineyards. Rebecca Eddy is with the state's Department of Agriculture. Today we have over 45 licensed farm wineries throughout the state. They're currently have production on just over 800 acres. And that's over 205,000 vines that have been planted, maintained, pruned, managed. One of those wineries is only 74 miles from Boston in Woodstock, Connecticut. Nikki Auger's parents opened Taylor Brook Winery in 1999. Auger spent years in Boston and California, working in the restaurant and wine industries. In 2016, my dad became ill, and so I came home to help with the family business. Um, 2016 was our last harvest together. My mom, Linda, still runs the tasting room. Today, Auger and her team produce small batch wines and beer on this 44-acre property. They work fast during the short growing season. And I really have to work with the fruit as it's coming out of the vineyard. We do all of our fermenting and aging in stainless, which gives it that sort of just fresh and light flavor profile. In late summer, it's time to remove excess foliage so grapes can ripen in the sun. Here we are with our Cayuga grapes and they are going through verasion and that means that they are rapidly gaining sugar and changing color. Auger tests the grape's sugar content before harvest. We just select a berry, squish it, rub the juice here and then take a reading. But thinking beyond grapes has become a priority. We've all noticed an increase of changing weather patterns and what that means, it's an increase in chaos. Auger says drought, excessive rain and heat can wreak havoc on thin skinned fruit, which can be prone to disease and desiccation, not to mention birds and bugs. In September, um, not only are we the only crops left, but they're really sweet. So they're really inviting for any kind of little pest who's trying to get that sugar. OJ's husband, Ralph Fiegel, is a chef who runs a brewery at Taylor Brook. Together, they are diversifying what they grow to keep their farm and their business resilient. There's a global shortage of Marian blackberries. and three years, we'll be growing enough blackberry to satisfy our consumption of it. They're ripe and delicious right now. The team also forages for wild elderberries to use in cocktails and ale. If they are growing wild, that they have a certain strength, they are already adapted to this climate. However, grapes remain the focus for now. I have 48 tanks. Wine is a living, breathing thing, and it's aging in the tank. It's changing. I'm getting like a raspberry and red cherry. Identifying flavors takes time and training, says Auger, but people can learn. The best thing to do to develop your palate is the next time you're eating a peach, stop, take five seconds and just say to yourself, I'm eating a peach. And in that way, your olfactory memory will sort of like take a picture and remember peach. What's funny is tasting the wine is everyone's least favorite part of the job. And at 7.30 in the morning when you come in, you want to be slowly sipping on your coffee, not power tasting through 48 wines and trying to notice differences from last week's. Of course, it helps when you like what you're drinking. So refreshing. Right yeah, now. this is really good. <laughs> so good. Mm. It's so good. Yeah, it's so 
And of course, we're all familiar with people tasting wine. They sort of yes. slurp it. It's not being rude. Nikki explains, obviously, there's a reason for that. Yes, yeah, so when you aerate wine like that, the scent and the flavors become concentrated and they go straight up to your nose, mm -hmm. making it easier to memorize the wine and distinguish the taste. You're making a face. I, <laughs> when, you go, when you go straight up your nose, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but yes, you're right. It's lovely. <laughs> up next, a vineyard with a water view.